Hi, we're in week 10 now. Remember last week we started going into detail about how we can use balance scorecard measures in more detail in the organization, particularly in the execution of strategy. We focused on quality, quality measures, and we looked at a framework where the financial measures were used to get attention of the C managers and we looked at various ways in which we can execute various initiatives or get feedback on the execution, Pareto diagrams, control charts, and fishbone diagrams. We also talked about a range of measures, non-financial measures that can be used to get feedback on the implementation of various quality improvement initiatives. This week we're going one step further and looking at balanced scorecard in helping a, man, a firm manage its uh, time-based competition. Time-based competition is very important and also the theory of constraints. The second half of the chapter which we're covering this week looks at um, customer response time as the learning objective number six. Learning objective number seven is a theory of uh, constraints where we look at the uh, investment opportunity costs and the total costs. Learning objective eight, how to manage bottlenecks. So we're going to look at some of these objectives in today's lecture. But before I do that, what is very important is to have a look at the, over, the big picture in which firms are trying to compete on time. You see, firms face a lot of uncertainty and generally that uncertainty creates time pressures to do things. And that uncertainty is caused by two main things, that is customer demand and production uncertainty. So we never know when an order is going to come in from a customer or new orders come in that are greater than what we ever expected and suddenly our idle capacity is under is overutilized and we have to make choices between which orders we get out, which orders we get out first, second, third and fourth. Production uncertainty and that could be caused by the lack of control over the operations in the factory itself. So there's many things that can be caused by production uncertainty. We would like to feel that we can have control over that, but because of other problems with quality, as we looked at last week, or the way things are delivered or the supply chain management, that can cause problems with production uncertainty. And we know that uh, one of the biggest challenge for us, challenges for a lot of companies that are actually um, big challenges, a lot of companies that are actually uh, managing their supply chains in China, the biggest concern that they have is in the customer demand, in actually trying to forecast demand from the customers. If they can forecast demand, then they can manage the whole supply chain. So that's really interesting that these are the time drivers facing the firm. Once we understand the time drivers, we want to try and measure how we're going. So we try and we learn how to, we have measures of customer delivery, that is what percentage of orders are we actually delivering on time, and customer response time, which is the time that customer initiates an order to the time the, the customer receives the order. So these are definitely important measures that all companies need to have in their organization to get feedback on how they're going on their time-based competition. Now there's one thing that's really not made clear in the textbook and in the learning objectives and that is the association between the how managing the customer expectations and the activity bottlenecks. You see in terms of trying to compete better and actually to grab a larger market share, we could go out and spend a lot of time on marketing and managing expectations on the customers. And we can say, look, we're going to deliver one or two days faster than your our competition. And then we can get a whole lot of new orders in and that's really, really great. We're capturing market share. But now you've made that promise in the market, that value proposition, now you have to deliver. And so the way you market and manage expectations of customers can indirectly, or directly in this case, put pressure on your operations. 
and you better be sure that your operations are ready to actually match the expectations that you have been promoting in the marketplace. So we do talk about managing expectations which is the marketing side of the business and the operations, activity bottlenecks, they are quite related in many ways. And so in today's lecture we're going to talk about the balance scorecard and how what time related measures we can use. We're going to look at relevant costs which is associated with the theory of constraints and that's where we consider direct materials to be the only relevant costs. Just a point of departure, remember in Management Accounting 1 your uh, prior unit that you studied before Management Accounting 2, we looked at relevant costs, they were defined as future costs and also costs that will change in the future. And so, but when we're looking at theory of constraints, all we care about are the direct materials costs. The direct materials costs of producing uh, one batch versus another batch, and they are the relevant costs involved when we're under constraints, when we're under time-based competition, when we have bottlenecks in the production operations. Ultimately, the action that was required if we're under time-based pressure, we have some bottleneck, we want to increase capacity or we want to outsource or we want to market. Maybe we have to change our marketing to get more space between what the customers expect and what we can deliver. Maybe we have been over-promising in the past, so then we need to change the marketing to fit with what we can actually deliver. It's so important to have that match what the customers expect and what you are delivering. Ultimately, customers take the promises on delivery seriously and that can work with positive or negative expectations depending on if you can meet that promise. So be careful. If you can't improve capacity or outsource or manage your bottlenecks, maybe you have to take care of your marketing and market something that's real. What you can really do, not you uh, promising to do but you can't deliver. We do look at an example in the term of banks. So all of you go to the bank I'm sure. Many of us go to automatic teller machines now so we don't get disappointed with the service. But we sometimes we have to go to the bank. So we'll look at the waiting time as an example. And in the banks there are many ways of analyzing the waiting time. In this case we want to consider that like a production process so it depends on how many customers we're ordering uh, coming into the bank, uh, the serving time, how long it takes to actually serve each customer and the capacity and the capacity from a bank's point of view is how many hours the bank is open for business and so is it open for five hours or six hours things like that and so in one example we put all these to these together and we find out that on average customers have to wait for five minutes they have to wait for five minutes and what happens is when they have to wait for five minutes are they going to be happy or are they going to be sad? We need to think about it. It gets back to what you're promising the customer and managing your expectations. Are you competing for customers based on your promising that they don't have to wait five minutes? Maybe if you go to some countries, customers are happy to wait for half an hour. Or in some countries, some parts of Africa, they're happy to wait for one hour. Of course, in Hong Kong, we're talking about minutes and maybe there's expectations of 30 seconds or less uh, to wait. Okay, so let's give them, we've got five minutes, we want to reduce that down to three minutes or four, three minutes or two minutes to match with our promise. What are you going to do? And these, we're going to consider that in today's lecture. Maybe we have to do more training of the customer service uh, people. So then they can actually serve maybe 20% more customers every hour or 30% more customers every hour. They make fewer errors and they're more productive in serving the customer on all their needs. Or maybe you want to incre increase the capacity, that is you want to hire more customer service staff, open up more frontage for customers to go to. Either one or the other may be a response to change in this five minutes down to four or three minutes. So we'll consider an example like that in today's lecture. So just getting back to the big framework, look, all, cust all companies 
are competing on time in some way. All right, we can't change that. And it's because there's uncertainty in customer demand and also there's uncertainty in the supply chain or the production environment. How do you respond to that? There's two ways. We actually respond by managing expectations, upwards or downwards. <laughs> or, and together with that, we need to deal with the bottlenecks. We need to work out if we set a certain expectation, what is the bottleneck? And what are we going to do to fix that bottleneck? In the bank example here, we may fix that bottleneck through training or hiring new staff. And so we'll look at more examples in today's lecture. But that really encapsulates what we're covering in today's lecture, how companies compete on time, and we've got a few analytical models to go through in actually calculating uh, time-based uh, problems. And we'll also look at theory of constraints where we look at various options in dealing with the bottlenecks. Do we actually uh, decide to produce one type of product or another type of product depending on the relevant cost that is direct materials and not the other costs that you've considered in the past in your management accounting one. So that finishes uh, this section on the balance scorecard applied in the firm and look forward to see you in the lecture. Thank you.